the question seems different depending upon what philosophical system of morality you're using and ethics you're using. You seem to be approaching it from a utilitarian perspective or some type of deontological perspective or natural law theory or even possibly even a virtue ethicist position. Obviously spoken like a opinion. true consequentialist. Um, no, it has nothing to do with your normative framework. It's just a fact of life. You were trying to use another analogy to poison the well of what I'm saying I'm not, oh while not God, engaging the, the, the with what I'm actually turns. arguing. Holy shit. I know, I know. When you start losing, you start saying like debate bro terms, even though you use them yourself. You listed off all three normative frameworks in a conversation for no reason, okay? And you're <laughs> millions with a secret like, cure to cancer. Yeah, so this is like the very first thing I said is because I say you're doing this. So what you're really arguing is that we just shouldn't have um, life without parole. That's that's the whole argument then that you're making. It's right not now. the whole argument. That is the entire argument. That is important. You're saying that because the whole argument is- Can you, you just no, pay attention? Whole... In the United States, the death penalty is still legal. Also, the U.S. allows prisoners to be sentenced to life sentences without the possibility of parole. Rather than facing a lifetime punishment, should we allow prisoners to opt for the death penalty? All right. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward. We'll start with you, Chris. Um, give us an opening statement. Sure. I don't know that I'll have a lot to say because I mentioned to Prime uh, when he invited me to do this, like my own views on the death penalty, I guess, are, are somewhat in flux, but also something that we've fought about before in the past. Prime, as you know, that I'm strongly opposed to assisted suicide and uh, the, the option that you've presented of opting into uh, the death penalty. If you are somebody who's on death row or, or, or somebody who's who has a life sentence without the possibility of parole, parole but is not on death row uh, is to me just kind of another form of that. Uh, so So that to me seems like uh, a, a no-go and we can talk about why um in in general and in principle i i think uh i i accept the possibility of the legitimacy of the death penalty because i accept that uh punishments or crimes ought to be proportional and i think there are some things that are so bad that the only proportional punishment is uh something like the death penalty um in practicality and in the way that it actually works in the u.s criminal justice system that's a whole different issue entirely um but yeah so i'm, I'm just gonna plant my flag on no we shouldn't let people opt in to uh, uh assisted suicide effectively regardless of the length of their sentence and then uh, i'll argue with whatever anybody else says thank you thank you all right about us yeah um so i'll uh, preface this with uh my views in general on the on on prison and and whether it should be more rehabilitative or not um are still kind of still kind of up in the air but in general because uh in the u.s we allow people to be sentenced to life without the uh possibility of parole i think it's fair that we allow prisoners to opt for the death penalty um i don't think it's something that should ever be like forced on somebody but i think if somebody chooses um to chooses that they want to i think that it's their individual autonomy um and I think that they should be able to do that, um, especially given that we don't know what conditions they're living in um, and, uh, and and possibly with like some preconditions with that, obviously. Like I think for us to allow it for people to opt into a death penalty, um, I think there would have to be like some preconditions, maybe um, family members are notified, um, maybe they are evaluated by a medical professional, um, things like that. So to make sure there's no abuse going on. Scott, please. Yeah, so this seems like a, it's an interesting question because it seems like someone has tried to devise an idea based off of making your feelings, like make like off of like, we'll feel better if we give this option without actually addressing the problem. And the problem is, is that we have a justice system, at least in my estimation, um, that is designed for retribution and vengeance as opposed to one that is designed to keep our communities safe, to stop crime, and to give people an ability to change their lives for the better. I don't think that any human is irredeemable, and the problem here is life in prison without the possibility of parole. And then saying like, oh, well, they have the option to kill themselves. That's not an option because you're using coercion which is the life in prison without the possibility of parole. And then you're given a choice between these two things. And, and somehow that's supposed to make people feel better about the situation. I think, I think what we have to do is fundamentally dismiss with that and, and move to the actual 
crux of the problem here, which is that people are being put in prison no matter what, and they can never leave because we as a society have deemed that some crimes are make these people irredeemable. And I think that's very anti-human and very anti-liberty of us. Steven. Um, whether you're for or against the death penalty, letting people opt in or out of it, I think is a bad idea. It creates a whole bunch of really crazy incentives. I can already see where like people start to measure the opt-in things for different prisons or different racial groups. And then people say it's racist or that some prisons are just so horrible that people are opting into the death penalty anyway. And it's just, it just seems like not a good idea. If we have the death penalty, then we should reserve it for whatever crimes we decide to use it for. It shouldn't be like an opt-in. That's really silly. Maybe. Um, yeah, I'm actually very much in favor of the death penalty. And I think that if someone has already been convicted and uh, they've been given life in, life in prison as, as their, their, their sentence, uh, it doesn't seem like there's any real benefit to society um, that could come from the rehabilitation at that point. So spending all this money to keep them in prison um, without the, even the option to, to opt out on their own um, and, and go with like an assisted suicide um, seems wasteful um, and, and actually kind of cruel. Uh, because what you're, you're in effect saying is that you know somebody who's dealing with the uh, with the the anguish, right, the mental anguish of of being in prison for the rest of their lives, right? You, you'd rather force them to stay in that fucked up situation and to deal with that mental anguish, uh, to punish them for a thing that they have no hope of of uh, of a, of a, like um of making any any kind of like real like recompense for um, or penance for, right? So it, it seems it seems cruel not to give them the the option out. Okay, open to the panel. Um, so I think that uh, um, a main point is that uh, that I would like bring up in this is that we're not really like talking about the the question itself is not really about like the criminal justice system itself. Is it? It's specifically about allowing people whether they can volunteer into execution or or not, right? Yeah, but, that's, but yeah, it's bound think, up together, right? Like uh, yeah, I mean it's bound like... up. But uh, and and while I said while I agree with you guys on the idea that um, while I agree with you guys on on the idea that we should like m maybe look at the circumstances around this and make sure people aren't being coerced into this, like I don't feel comfortable telling somebody that um, that if they've decided that they want to like end their lives, I don't feel comfortable telling somebody that well. Sorry, we have to wait. Um, uh, you have to wait, and you have to live in like a really shitty situation and be in anguish all the time um, because we haven't determined whether this is um, like I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm having trouble wording it. Um, it. It seems like at that point you'd be saying you have to stay here because we want you to live out your sentence as punishment, right? It's, it's, it seems similar to that because it doesn't seem like they're waiting. To like clear anything up, or if they've been if they've been convicted and this person uh, isn't appealing, right? Um, then, like, what what are they waiting for? Right? It just seems like you want them there, just to, so they can live out their sentence and die of like natural causes, I guess. Right, but see, this is this is exactly the false dichotomy that I was expressing. Right, is the issue isn't whether or not we should allow people to opt in for the death penalty. The issue is is that people are being sentenced with life in prison without the possibility of parole. Right. So when given the chance of you will be in a cage for the rest of your life, no matter how, no matter what you do, it is lit unless you are like escaping Alcatraz or something. Right. Unless you've got like a little pickaxe behind the fucking hot lady poster and you think maybe you can fucking tunnel under the prison. Right. You're going to be there in in a cage with other people that society is deemed to put in a cage forever, no matter what. And then you're given to the ability to choose between these two scenarios. And for some, yeah, opting in for the death penalty might seem like the better of those two choices. But the problem here is that there's literally no path to redemption for these people. I think we yeah, should I, be I, very clear because are, are we arguing? Because it sounds like this is about to, it sounds like we're arguing whether or not we should or shouldn't have life in prison or the death penalty rather yeah. than should we? Because that's where we're segueing into with that argument. Yeah, I'd really rather focus on uh, argument itself um i mean i am focusing on the argument by saying that th th that that's the problem with like like unless the argument hinges on just so you know none of you are allowed to be against the, the life in prison without the possibility of parole and you must all believe in that and like i like it kind of handcuffs our ability to even be able to talk honestly about it i mean look i uh, it's 
I agree with you, right? Um, a lot of this is going to be about, well, you know, if we uh, changed up our uh, system, our, our, our system, um, created a more equitable system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a more fairer system that would clear up a lot of this. But, and I agree, that would be the case, right? And I, and a lot of the reforms that you got in your mind, I'm for them. But in terms of the system that we have now, right? Um, if it's going to be in place for a long time, and it probably will be, um, like, could we uh, give these people this option? I think Destiny's right that like this does create some really weird institutional incentives. Like you're you're just you're you're adding in uh, a, a a choice that is gonna fundamentally change the nature of the system itself and so you're gonna have cases where like yeah you're just gonna have prisons like we, we saw reporting recently about like the conditions currently in like rikers or something right you're gonna have prisons where it's just so bad and so shitty and the guards are so awful and whatever else is going on but yeah you're just gonna have like wildly high rates of opting in and that's good you know there's there's an equity problem there for sure and i don't I know mean, how, you, how you solve that i mean i think there are bringing up rikers on... oh Sorry. go ahead there, there is a, there was a study on um, the people who volunteered, death row inmates who volunteered. I believe it's eighty-eight percent uh, struggle with mental illness or substance abuse. Um, so, this is, yeah, if it's eighty-eight percent of people who are who are struggling with like a, with with a mental illness or substance abuse, then um i'm not sure i'm not sure um i i still think that it should be just the system that we have right now in place i just don't think it's fair to force people to be imprisoned for life and well but i mean like if that's the punishment like that's the punishment right like Right, so taking prime at this, right, so if we're just going to take the system as it is, we've decided, at least in some states, that there are crimes that are so bad uh, under certain circumstances and given certain, you know, uh, yeah. evidence presented at trial that they deserve death. That that, And then there are other ones that just deserve life in prison. We've distinguished those two things already. So I'm just wondering, like, where, like, how, how you, I, I think the justification for those two things is different, right? The, the possible justification for, I think it's okay for the state to sometimes put somebody to death, and then the possible justification for I think it's okay for the state to sometimes imprison somebody for the rest of their life and then the possible justification for that person who's in prison for the rest of their life should then be able to choose that they want to die they, like you could have different arguments for each of those things I just don't know how we make those yeah points. so I I honestly don't think that we should be forcing people to uh, the thing is like if, if somebody is, is is being if their punishment is imprisonment for the rest of their life I'm not really sure what the point of that punishment is yeah, right. well, I mean, taking our right. current system, because you had brought up Rikers, right? I mean, does everyone know, here know the story of Caleb Browder? Uh, I had to, I I had to look up the name real quick. So, yeah, long story short, kid totally didn't steal a backpack, got yeah. accused of stealing a backpack, and he was in Rikers for over two years um, without ever going to trial. Um, constantly basically being forced into trial or like, you know, and the prosecution would just be like, oh, well, we need a delay or an extension. And by asking for a delay or an extension, even though you're not supposed to be there longer than six months, there's like this weird loophole where like they were, they would like, they wouldn't count the time in between the ability to get the court date where they would ask for the extension, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So he did two years in Rikers for a crime he didn't commit never got his day in court and eventually they just let the kid go and after spending two years in rikers he developed depression so bad that he committed suicide out of prison right so imagine the scenario like the idea that it's like oh well these people can opt in for suicide it's like this is what rikers did to someone in two years who had a constant kind of source of hope right and that source of hope was well i'm gonna get my day in court and once I get my day in court and the evidence is shown, I'll be able to prove myself innocent. And the system grind him up like the fucking piece of meat that he was because he was just some young black kid with no power and money. And then he gave a fuck about him. And then he committed suicide, right? So, I mean, uh, you're describing a situation where these people are hopeless and, and this is supposed to be humane, but I don't understand how you separate that from the, 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 depression and anxiety and the the oppression that someone is facing by being locked in prison with these people like how do you even get to make the claim that this is a this isn't a humane action 
All it is is a paperwork nightmare so that some people can feel like they did something good and they didn't. What they did is they let people kill themselves so that they don't have blood on their hands. Okay. Uh, oh, you were going to respond yeah, to Yeah, so what I was saying before was was that I, I don't understand um, what the purpose is of imprisoning somebody. If somebody has done something so bad, uh, well, imprisoning somebody for life, right? If somebody has done something so bad that we've deemed them not able to be entering back in society, that they should be in prison forever, I don't see what the difference is between that and just letting them opt in for death. If that is what, if we have given, we've deemed them so um, uh, unworthy of redemption that we're not even going to give them um, a chance for parole, what's what's the point of keeping them in prison for life? If they well, want I, the ability to like, and and I get it, there's like ethical issues with this. There's like right. we want to make sure that these people aren't being coerced, but but if the system is as it is right now, and that is how people are being treated in prisons where they're not given parole and they and we've decided to just remove them from society and they're not really i don't know i just don't understand i, I don't know that i i don't want to be the person defending like life in prison without the possibility of parole because i don't i don't want to but uh like i don't know that it's necessarily that you've decided they aren't worthy of redemption i think the standard reasoning is that there are some people who just are literally <laughs> incorrigible who you can't possibly redeem and whether that's demonstrated by their conduct once or repeated conduct i don't know you know there's all sorts of qualifications for how you get life in prison but i yeah i don't know if it's like a question of worthiness so much as just like there are, the assumption is there are people who are so bad that we could not even hope to uh have them re-enter society or alternatively as, as scott said it's it's a, it's an issue of punishment that where the reasoning behind it is there's we have to punish this in some way and the only possible punishment that that works or that is fair or that pays their debt to society or whatever it is 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 the rest of their life and you know and in, in, there's in a, a, yeah but like why we're not why? making sentences based off of 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 like what we think is is I, i'm sorry I, I i i shouldn't have said anything if you can go <laughs> do, I, I can't so form my um, words right now yeah so and and i think there's like a not all these people like are, are you know still pleading their innocence right? some of these people have admitted they're guilty right um samuel little uh, the most i think he, i think he is the most prolific serial killer in american history killed like 90 people <laughs> and, and he, he's he's given interviews he gave interviews gloating about it and laughing about it right um and this man you know when he was caught in 2012 he had diabetes had a heart condition and we ended up paying for that for the rest of his life <laughs> um, until he like died in like uh, I think like 2020 uh, in a hospital, right? Uh, the Golden State Killer, who's in prison right now, killed, raped, and murdered like like I think like 50 something people, right? Over decades, and um, we're paying for that guy too. So if, if we have somebody like this, right? There's there's no chance this person's fucking innocent. They're not they're not arguing that they're innocent. They've admitted they don't they've done these things. What use is there to anybody? Right. Uh, by, by having them sit there uh, while we pay for their medication, pay for their surgeries if they need, if they have like a heart condition, pay, pay for to keep them alive if they want to opt out, if they, they'd rather just check out and do assisted suicide. Yeah. And there's no debt that's being paid by them sitting there for the rest of their lives. That like the it, as it is like with some of these crimes that we're deeming that people are are should be locked up forever. The, there's no amount of punishment that would make it um that make it a worthy like debt payer or something like that right, right? it's it's just it, there's there's no other than other than just punishing somebody that i just don't see the reason yeah like scott i mean if you're like opposed to life in prison like what what kind of punishment would you give to somebody like samuel little or the golden state killer People who've killed dozens of people raped and murdered dozens of people across the country i didn't say i was against um i mean so we have to engage in the system that we're in. So given the system that we're in, I won't go down a rabbit hole of other theoretical systems, right? But given the system that we're in, I said nothing about being uh, against life in prison. What I'm against is life in prison without the possibility of parole. Mm -hmm. So right? you I think there's a big distinction the for somebody who's murdered like 90 people. Yes. Right. Um, but the question itself is... I would just give them the people. death penalty. That just seems straightforward. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's my position. I'm not moving from it. Well, okay, but like so, what? Oh, go ahead, start. 
the the argument is is about specifically people who are in life in prison without the possibility for parole. Right. Right. We have yes. this, we we can all acknowledge that I'm fucking confused as to what what it, what what debt is being paid here by somebody sitting there in prison with no possibility for parole. Um, there's a, a and and what is the harm in in letting somebody other than let's say the cases where where there could be like abuse happening and that's why i would say there needs to be some preconditions to allowing somebody electing for death but i don't see what the what the issue is if you're already removing them from society and you the deem problem. that they are not worthy of, of of parole then what is the issue of letting them remove themselves from society further so the, if that's so what the problem really the problem the problem here and you know everyone's gonna get mad at me but it's just true you chris might not get mad at me is that the question seems different depending upon what philosophical system of morality you're using and ethics you're using, right? The, the real problem here is that you're, you seem to be approaching it from a utilitarian perspective, which is, you know, they're already in prison. The consequences of this action are, you know, oh, well, if the person kills themselves, Doobie's like, it'll be a little cheaper. To the to the taxpayer, right? We will save some money, and it has no effect whether or not they kill themselves or whether they just sit in prison the whole time. So why not save a little bit of money, right? And to people that believe in a you know people that maybe maybe they have a Christian belief or religious belief or some type of deontological perspective or natural law theory, or even possibly even a virtue ethicist position, will look at this situation differently. Because the cost of, of, of housing those errant, like extreme examples that you bring up, right? Like if we, I, I don't know how much it costs to house a serial killer another 20 years in jail. But if we, if we compare that to, let's say, um, the cost of housing people in jail or the cost of like America's budget, I'm sure that it would be statistically insignificant, right? And so to other people from other moral positions, they just simply say murdering people is wrong or assisted suicide is wrong. Or they have my position that said life in prison without a possibility of parole is wrong. And so they're, they're both evil choices. And when being told to pick between evil and evil, I say, no, I don't pick the lesser of two evils. Okay, so firstly, we always pick the lesser of two evils because everything can be measured in degrees of like evil or goodness, right? There's nothing that we fully 100% agree with. So that statement is just completely meaningless. Um, secondly, obviously- Spoken like a true consequentialist. Um, no, it, that has nothing to do with your normative framework. It's just a fact of life, right? Like, that anything in life you choose is very rarely in real life, outside of video games, is there gonna be like a perfect option. So you're always choosing between, you're making some sort of compromise always. There's never a, a perfect choice. So we're always choosing between the quote unquote lesser of two evils, especially when we're talking about punishment. We're already talking about people that have fucked up in life that are through a system that most citizens hopefully never have to engage in. So obviously there's gonna be difficulty in, in, in what we say, right? There, nothing is gonna be perfect. Um, secondly, obviously there's gonna be like different depending on your moral framework, like your choice. But I mean, that's kind of what we were discuss, right? Like to say that like, oh, everybody has a different choice. I, I think that's what we're here to talk about, right? Like not to, not to name off all the normative frameworks and say, well, any, anybody might think something different. Like, well, the point is, well, what do you think, right? Right, yeah, well, so I, just... I gave what I think and then I was explaining to Stardust, right? And it's like, I don't see the point. And I'm like, well, here's why there's a breakaway. I don't right? know why you brought in so... like the utilitarian, you know, whatever philosophical, I, I don't Norman I, of ethics. I don't I don't know all that stuff, bro. I don't know. That was for that was for Doobie. <laughs> oh, was, oh, okay. Well, yeah, but there's not nobody is taking a purely like utilitarian in the sense that we're literally just analyzing dollars. I don't think anybody here took that. Doobie was literally think. doing that. Doobie was literally saying, "Well, it's cheaper." So no, hold on. I, I, I listed that as one of the benefits. So not only is it okay, cheaper, okay. I, but, but, but no, we, we don't gain anything. The person doesn't gain anything. I'm sure the victims don't gain anything by knowing that the person is sitting there in a cell forever. Right, we're going to hook them, up, hook them up to an IV and keep them alive for as long as we can keep them alive for fucking what? It doesn't seem like there's, if there's any any reason for that. It, in fact, it seems cruel. Um, yeah, if this person again, like, like, generally, like, generally wants wants to like is is in anguish over being in prison for for decades or whatever, right? And they want it, they want to die. Um, keeping them in that state uh, just seems it, again. You're not gaining anything. You're actually losing money. They're not getting anything. There's no possibility that they're gonna ever getting out of that situation. Dude, so why keep them? All back? of this is all of this can easily be brushed aside with one thing, right? Like you say, they're in anguish, 
right? The prison system is anguished. They're without hope, right? So they want to kill themselves to escape this system. And it only takes one example, just like your serial killer example of like, why not in this extreme example? There's plenty of other examples of like some white lady in the 1970s getting raped by some dude with a ski mask on. And then the cops being like, hey, Curly Joe, who just got out of the prison for a cocaine fucking, uh, 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 you know, for selling cocaine and just got out of jail. Are you sure he wasn't the one that raped you? And she's like, I what don't know, mate. Doing? And then he's what like, yeah, this? no, it totally happened. And that because there's countless examples of being of people being put in prison for crimes that they didn't commit. Right. Yeah. And then being exonerated later. And many of those people have given the option to kill themselves, to escape their anguish and pain might have fucking done it. And instead, we facilitated the suicide of innocent people who could have been freed later by additional exculpatory evidence because we gave them this option to do this because we were torturing them in prison. It's torture. Yeah. Okay. So, so even if it's torture, do you feel comfortable? Let's hear it. Even if it's torture, let's go. Okay. <laughs> That's a Even great way to start. Do you a sentence. feel? I, I'm sorry. I and I'm no, still funny. I'm still kind of exploring this in my head. But even if it's torture, do you feel comfortable telling somebody like, "Hey, sorry, I can't let you decide to end your life when you want to"? Because guess what? Um, uh, w this might be um, th this might be torture for you, and we need to reform the entire prison system before we even think about doing that. It's, I don't feel like that's very cool. It's like supposed to, let to be some, torture. It's prison. It, yeah, it's supposed I get it's to be an unpleasant be... experience. That's the point, like our point in America behind prison is that it's unpleasant, right? Yeah. I yes, I'm perfectly comfortable telling somebody who's decided they want to kill themselves not to kill themselves and trying to stop them. Yes, <laughs> like I don't. Again, like we've argued about this before on panels, but like maybe that's controversial. But yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But why? Because so so is it so is it just I, like it's just I would like, stop you if you were gonna like like yeah okay but but there's so um there's a famous example uh fuck I think like a few years ago of this uh, woman who was uh, like sexually assaulted repeatedly right and she'd been in that hospital she'd been to therapists and psychiatrists and she just couldn't live with it right so she decided to go for assisted suicide um they she they tried to convince her out of it and she decided to go through with it and she did right so if somebody is their reality or right, their waking reality is like torment right um why would you and and nothing that they're doing nothing that anybody else, else else has done has like has taken them out of that torment why would you want them to stay there i don't want them to stay there i also don't want them to kill themselves yeah i, I think it's a like, yeah i mean obviously I'd like, rather I mean, like, when i brought this up earlier somebody in the chat said well if you're against assisted suicide you just don't care about people suffering it's the same argument that i've had no i don't think that's true i think it's a it's, it's no what i want is yeah i don't, is, I don't think you don't suffering to be alleviated through means that i don't think yeah. are morally reprehensible so but, yeah. but the, the way that their suffering would be alleviated would be well, possibly be them like not, no longer being in prison but that's not a possibility anymore right so like you could just be of the position that like the state shouldn't be in the business of killing people. That might be a position that somebody would take that like keeping people in prison for even indefinite amounts of time is an acceptable way for the state to punish people. But the state shouldn't be in the business of actually killing citizens. So maybe we don't ever give an option for somebody to like, you know, do the death penalty. But we, you know, you can lock people up indefinitely if the crimes they've committed societally have been decided to be bad enough that, you know. At the same time, I think you could you could say like I like I tentatively do, and I'm still kind of on the fence about this. Somebody could talk me into believing that this is entirely inconsistent. But you could also believe, I think, that the state is the one who should be dealing out the death penalty. But if it's in a, if it is a case that we've decided it is not worthy of the death penalty, then allowing that person to opt in and commit assisted suicide is like is skirting that process. If you think there is a legitimate means of dealing out death level punishments for crimes, which is the state, uh, then yeah, just like killing yourself could be out of bounds as well. Like you, I think both of those options are possible. Well, destiny demanded that I pick the lesser of two evils. Um, so you, everything in life is framework. picking the lesser of two evils. Yes. Yeah. So under, under your, under your framework. Yeah. Obviously I'm against the state doling out death in any form, shape or, uh, or capacity, including assisted suicide. If you, if you, if you must frame the conversation as such, but I mean, I'm against both of these, these ideas. Right. And, I, and it just seems like a way for people to try and feel better about the fact that they're locking people in prison for the rest of their life. It just seems like one more way of like, it seems like very often our society comes up with ideas where 
it's very separate from the violence that the state is enacting on people. And so long as it can get like a little bit of like, like a little bit of med a spoonful of sugar to make medicine go down. Right. Like then all of a sudden people will stop bitching for a little while. So, and that's what this seems like. It's like, seems, it's a spoonful of medicine to make the so it's sugar to make the medicine. go down. So this seems like the ops. I would say that about your position that, um, without actually, so, uh, you're saying that these people need to stay in a system that we acknowledge is torture. You've said multiple times is torture. You need to stay there, right? Um, rather than uh, like uh, take control of your life, right? I, which I think is something would be within your framework. Uh, take control of your life and decide what you want to do with it. So uh, this person... <laughs> that's not a, that's a false choice. Uh, it's not you you false don't choice. have control of your life. You're locked in a cage. No, and you're not allowed to leave. Ulti- ending your life is the ultimate uh, decision, right? About your life is to end your but life. It's that, right? No, no, like, you can't say that is, you can't say that that's that that's any element of choice there. You're being tortured you and coerced and you're not allowed to leave. When you're in prison, you get very little choice when you're in prison. This is true. Yes, I know. Right? It's, it's not, not some situation. expansion of liberty to let people fucking kill kill themselves in prison. I think it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it is. I think it yeah. can no, be. It's I, think not. It can be. I think it can be. I think it with the right like with the right um uh conditions, yeah, it certainly can be. Like I feel like the right to choose when you your life ends can be like the ultimate uh, like expression of of I don't know, having your 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 freedom essentially, right? A choice made at the end of a gun is no choice at all. If it was, it's duress. They're literally under like, like the, the sure. most extreme form of duress, right? Mm-hmm. Like and I can they're not able to make a decision. Yeah, I agree with you that it's a, it's, 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 it's a really, it's a shitty situation. Wait, we um, shouldn't agree. That's a stupid, it's a stupid argument. Is somebody doing, choosing assisted suicide at the end of like cancer? Is that not a choice you can make? Okay, why is yeah. my argument a stupid argument? People choose death before even because, going into chemo. Because, because, like, because don't don't make throwaway insults to the argument and then bring up on, another it's argument. It's not a throwaway insult. I'm demonstrating the stupidity of the argument. Okay, if somebody is locked in prison, they're there. It's mm-hmm. not like the option is like either freedom or assisted suicide. It's you're either locked in prison forever or you're locked in prison forever, or you could opt to do the death penalty if you want to do it. Those are your two choices before you. Just like if you're doing assisted suicide because of like some sort of medical ailment, you're either dying of cancer, or you are doing assisted suicide instead of prolonging the unhealthy years of your Destiny, life of dying Destiny, of cancer. Destiny, I know you're smarter than this, so I'm just going to assume that your stupid take is because you're playing video games and not paying attention. So what I'm going to go with, right, is it is not the same thing when a system of individuals is forcing you into a cage and you have no choice no, no, versus you're not being afflicted a with a no. disease. You're not forced into Oh, can I walk out? No. Can I come over and there. kill you? You are there and then of get your charged. own actions. Societally speaking, we have decided that if you, this is like when you fail a paper and the teacher what actions says, I didn't give gave, you What actions gave this person cancer? Is it, is it now? Wait, no, 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 no. You're, we're, we're, talking about, we're talking about being, what are you we're talking talking about? being in jail. We're talking about being in jail. When you're in jail, you're not just there randomly. You've done some set of actions in society to end up in jail. You've earned that spot, just like you earned that spot. Right, but we're already, but we are also unless you're innocent. What? So assuming you're guilty. So assume, yeah, that's that's the assumption I believe we're all working under, right? Assuming you're guilty, right, and you're going to be you're there right. Anyway. You're right. No one is, but they could be innocent, right? But assuming Hopefully this person, innocent person is guilty. doesn't opt for the devil, but who knows, right? Reg- regardless, there's problems with innocent mm-hmm. people being in jail too. There's problems with innocent people not going to jail. Yeah, that's not part of this example. That's not part of the, the 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 argument. The argument is if you have somebody that's in jail and they've got a life in prison, should they be able to opt for the death penalty? To say that they're being forced to opt for it, like they're already in jail. It's not like they have an option to be free. It's either it said it's life- under duress. Everything and every single possible decision you make in jail is quote unquote under duress. Exactly, which is why it is the state that is the guardian of these people. It's not it you they don't have the ability to choose whether or not to kill themselves because they're literally locked in a fucking cage and tortured. And then that's literally that's literally like every scene in a movie with like a CIA agent that's torturing a guy and says, just give me the codes and I'll shoot you in the head and end it. That's literally what you're saying is like at any moment you can just end this. You can kill yourself. You can get out of this torture. I'll stop beating you for information. You're being tortured by the state. And then yeah, you're, you're saying, being tortured for not a the reason same thing because you cancer. earned it. You earned the torture. 
presumably. What, what is, I think I'm, I see what what Destiny is doing here with the um, with the comparison to somebody who's got cancer and going through treatment for that, right? Because a lot situations. of times, like, well, no, a lot of times, like, a uh, treatment for cancer can be torture. It can be torture. Right? Wait, no, I'm just saying that like, he's trying to say that like, well, it's not fair to make somebody choose something they're under duress. Like we can get mm -hmm. rid of that duress. Like when you use an example of like somebody being tortured for information. Okay, well, hopefully that we can just get them out of that situation completely. We don't want anybody to be tortured yeah. for information. Exactly, which was to, like, my argument to begin with, right? Yes, I understand. Even as you explain reason, well, your uh, own Steve, argument, uh, the stupidity even go. falls Let's apart. Even go, please, the reason please. why it doesn't make sense though is because when it comes to like, say, cancer, you are like, you, you're you're there no matter what. You're either gonna die of the chemotherapy, um, or, or I'm sorry, you're either gonna die of the cancer in, in the long term or you're gonna die of it in, um, you, you can do assisted suicide in the short term, right? Um, right when, when we're talking about somebody to... in prison, there is no freedom option. There's no good option. You're always gonna be there. You're always gonna be under duress. That's just, that, that's just the reality of the situation that you're in. Right. Again, you were trying to use another analogy to poison the well of what I'm saying I'm not doing, oh while not God, engaging with what I'm actually turns. arguing. Holy shit. I know, I know. When you start losing, you start saying like debate bro terms, even though you use them yourself. Bro, you listed off all three normative frameworks in a conversation for no reason. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't for no reason. It was a catch start us up on on why we have a disagreement. I don't understand. You should uh, you should know better than to start bringing those words up to me. Okay, my brain is not big enough for that. So I was uh, I was I was helping you understand why there was no. You well, actually you. actually actually you're actually contradicting yourself because you said you brought that up for Doobie, not for me. So no, I didn't. It, Someone else said I brought it up for Doobie. No, no, I, I just said the utilitarian p p portion. That's it. That's yeah. what you're referring to. That's it. Okay, um, okay. well, I don't know. Anyway, I don't, it, doesn't I don't. To get, it doesn't matter. To get back to what Destiny is saying, you're trying to compare someone who is being actively tortured by the state that could be guilty or could be innocent and their choice to engage in assisted suicide versus someone who has cancer, right? And then you're saying, so we can prove that duress isn't here. Right? That's not what it is. If you would like me to say, oh, let's, if you would like me to say undue influence, sure, we can use, we can use undue influence instead of duress if you want to get slippery with the words. But the argument itself is, is that people are forcing people into a situation that they could change. The state could give people the possibility of parole. I can't uncancer people because unless, okay, so unless you made your millions with a secret cure like, to cancer. Yeah, so this is like the very first thing I said is because I say you're doing this. So what you're really arguing is that we just shouldn't have um, life without parole. That's that's the whole argument then that you're making. It's right not now. the whole that argument. That is the entire argument. That is you're, important. you're saying because the whole argument is- that Will you're, you just no, pay attention? Whole, I am paying attention. The whole whole argument you're saying is that there's an alternative. The state just shouldn't give people these types of sentences. That's not the argument, but that's what you want to argue. I understand. It's a fun argument to have as an anarchist because the state is bad all the time. So. Usually, yeah, it is. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, if I was taking my anarchist position, it'd be a totally different argument here. Yeah, but Scott, it, it does seem like it, like that is what you're arguing, right? That, that yeah, no shit. The, state, the state could give uh, Samuel Little or the Golden State Killer guy or the Grim Sleeper, whoever the fuck, right? It could have given them the, the option of parole. Right. But with people like this, right, the, no, like it's, how, it's how, the, the how do that you that get these people exists. to a point where, where parole is even like like a realistic possibility? Like you could, it can be on a paper somewhere, but there, there's if, if you kill like 90 people, you're probably not going to get parole at any time soon. Right. So like just, is having it on a piece of paper somewhere enough for you to say that, oh, well, hey, this person has the option of parole. So, you know, we should just leave them in prison forever, even if we know they're never going to actually get parole. Again, I don't have a crystal ball and I'm not omnipotent, right? So that's not, so I don't know the innocence of anyone. No, you could have all of the evidence ever, right? You could have, you could have, you could have literal fucking body camera footage of them murdering people and, and, and their confession. And they still, there is still the ever so slightest possibility that this person is innocent. It is not the purview of the state to murder people or to assist in murdering people at all. That is just my position. Who's in the how, how can you support be, putting be people in prison yet? ever? Who should do it? What do you mean who should do it? Just because the state's not murder, should so, not be murdering people? Yeah, that's, no, nobody that's should a hot ever, take. It's not, first of all, you're saying murder, you're using murder. the term incorrectly. We're talking about killing somebody, right? As a punishment or justification for punishment. You think that there's no I amount of, it, no, there's no amount of crime. It's murder. It's not murder. It's <laughs> what, murder. What, is, what does murder mean to you? If you kill someone when your life is no longer in danger, it's murder. 
Okay, that's Period. not what I don't know. Okay, for somebody like quoting like justice and is not some form of is not some form of killing that doesn't count as murder uh, that, from my that, approximation. Murdering is when you kill somebody without provocation. That's what murder means when we're talking ethics, right? So if somebody like kills, you know, somebody else and the state decides to send somebody blah, 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 this is not considered murder. Nobody would call that murder. I am. Oh, well, touche. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you think that the, you said that you think the state should not be like responsible for killing people. Do you think that the state it should be responsible for preventing somebody from dying or if they want to die. That gets in, that's an interesting one, which is totally an aside. I don't know because you can take that to its extremes. Right. And, and then say that the state has the responsibility of, let's say experimental drugs that are worth billions of dollars. You, you know what I mean? Like, like that have the slimmest of chance of saving someone's life. So like, I don't know that you can make a, a definitive stance there that like is pragmatic in any capacity. Uh, do you wait, think that, how does that, sorry. How, do you, how do you does think that, that oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. how does that have to do with, with what is what is the experimental drug have to do with it? I'm sorry if I'm just not understanding it, but well, how does you ask me you ask me if the state has a responsibility of maintaining someone's life to no prevent matter what somebody from die dying if they themselves want to die do does the state have the right to oh, oh okay that? I see what you're saying I'm sorry I'm sorry I thought you yeah. were asking something else does the state have a right to forbid uh yeah I think so wait but like in all cases, like the state has a right to, if somebody chooses to like walk off a cliff for whatever fucking reason. I, I mean, I'm doing this in the context of people in prison, not in all cases. Does the state have okay. the right to imprison somebody for life? I believe so, yeah. Okay. For, so so long as they have the ability of parole, the yeah. like, possibility of parole. Yeah, I mean, like, so long as they have an ability that have exculpatory evidence or there's some process so that if if they're later found innocent, right, that they have the pathway to be able to to, to overturn a conviction. You could do that. Yeah, yeah, that's system. different than parole, because, like, there are people who have been on death row, right, yeah. who have been uh, yeah. oh, oh, shown let to me, be Let innocent, me rephrase, right? sorry. Right, so <laughs> let, me, let me rephrase. I think that everyone should be able to have the ability to parole because even if they can't prove their innocence, they may be innocent. Right. Even if they've exhausted all of their appellate court and everything, the Supreme Court was like, nah, deny. Right. There still may be people that are innocent that can then prove themselves and change. Um, I think everyone should have the ability to parole. That doesn't mean that you just get out automatically. Right. So for your serial killer that admitted to killing 90 people. Right. And there's video evidence and all of this. I think they should have the right to parole, even if we kind of know that the parole isn't going to go through. But there are some people like there have been reformed gang members that have like shot people um, and, you know, like that have become like paragons of, of, of fighting against gang activity and violence, right? That they went into prison. They spent 20 years in prison. They've been preaching to people like this is not the way to go. They have changed their fucking life. And I think, you know, even though they have murdered people, they have absolutely murdered people in shootings. And I think that if you've done 20 or 30 years, even if you've killed 10 fucking people and you've shown an exemplar record of trying to do good in the world, you have a, like, I don't see this person as a threat to society anymore. As a matter of fact, they're a positive net gain for society and they should be let out despite killing 10 people. Um, yeah, I, I just... I don't understand that that line of thinking. To be honest with you, um, fair enough. Fair enough. It could, it could, I mean, Scott, we've spoken before about like uh, I, I've watched like a lot of serial killer documentaries and shit, right? So maybe I've just seen yeah, too I many know. of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe I've just seen too many of them, and I know too much about what these people have done or people like this have done, and I can't imagine forgiving somebody like that guy in Canada who uh, like uh, made women into like fucking. Um, makeup products and sold them to people. <laughs> like I, I almost fifty of them, right? He put them in food, makeup products. I, I can't imagine. And he bragged about it. I can't imagine <laughs> that guy ever fucking paroling out. And, and even if right, he, but you, you can't know, imagine him writing, writing out. children books and, and Kim Kardashian called Obama. Like I, absolutely not. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Right. So like, right, but you're talking I about an extreme case here, right? Right, and, and well, that's the issue. If you're on like, death row or you're in prison for life, it is it typically not like a normal case, right? These are people right, who have done but, terrible. But what things. I just described are people. There, I can't remember the person's name exactly, but I'm thinking of a specific person that was on death row for murdering multiple people that became an anti-gang activist, 
right? Yeah, like uh, Tukey Tukey Williams or whatever, right? Wrote some children books, said, "Hey, don't don't get into gangs or whatever the fuck." But he murdered a family, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so, still, fuck that guy. Yeah, I don't think he'd write enough children's books to to make up for murdering three people. Like, I I don't understand. The, I just right. Don't understand I, I, well, I think between it's just a fundamental difference between you and me, which I think you think some people are irredeemable, and I don't. So, yeah. I, I, I want to check in with uh, you, Chris, here. Um, <laughs> you, Chris, uh, you haven't had a chance to speak. Yeah, I mean, we've gone kind of all over the place. Like, yeah, I do think to start this question, like th there is some sort of positive role that I hate talking about it like the state because I feel like we're just entering into anarchist discourse when we do that. I talk about it like in terms of the political community, the institutions that we have to live together well, uh, you know, whatever that looks like. Yeah, I think there's a positive role of the political community in creating a situation where fewer people want to kill themselves. And I think that any given person has, you know, uh, just as much of a right as any other person to stop someone from killing themselves if possible. So, yes, if you see somebody walking towards towards a cliff or running out into traffic, you should try to help them. Yeah, I'm good. Like, I have no problem saying that that sort of like me coercively stopping you from doing violent harm to yourself uh, is, is a good thing. Yeah, you should do that. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really like, we're kind of all over the place with this conversation. Like I said, I think there's different possible justifications for the death penalty and then assisted suicide, which really is kind of what we're talking about. Assisted suicide in a particular case where maybe somebody's under duress or they're, you know, a punishment for something that maybe they deserve. Um, yeah, but like it's a particular kind of assisted suicide. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think they're like, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's we've gone all over the place. So. <laughs> well, I, the thing is, we're we're specifically talking about, again, a situation and when when somebody has no chance of parole. So I I, I feel like hmm, that in a system lacking of any sort of compassion, being the American uh, prison system, that giving people uh, that sort of choice is uh, a, a very poor form uh, of compassion. That uh, it's not that I would be doing this to make myself feel better, which is something Scott said previously. Right. Um, I, I'm doing this because I want to give people uh, the option of what to do with their own lives. This is why I'm uh, for assisted suicide in, in general, um, that uh, if you are going through some sort of um, pain, if, you, if you're saying this is torture, right, then if you're going through this um, uh, pain, then you should have the ability to end it um, on your own terms. Uh, so this is why. So I, 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 that's why I don't um, buy this saying that we're doing this just to make ourselves feel better. Not at all. Right. If I want to make it, if I was going to make myself feel better um, and I had a magic political wand, then I'd have a completely different system on our hands. Right. But I can't do that. Right. I can't actually make myself feel better. Right. I, all I can do is uh, give these people the opportunity. And I think that the threat. So even this um, option was available. I think that only a very few people would take it. I think most people uh, would have that hope that, OK, I, especially if I didn't do it right, you didn't do it, then there is a possibility that evidence comes up. People understand, right, that others get out um, because uh, maybe the prosecutor fucked them over, which is a thing that happens. Right. Uh, maybe uh, you just can. Uh, you had a, a bad trial to start with. And if you got a second one, um, things would turn out better. There's all kinds of reasons why these things happen, and especially if you are actually innocent. I think those people would actually stick around right maybe a few of them would take that option but um so uh and we can where are you getting safe that from? safeguards we can put safeguards in place um to help evaluate them right so that they don't feel uh, pressured right but now now you're talking about now you're talking about so like are when 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 engaging with assisted suicide just for a second right um are you for them going through uh, several stages of psychological evaluation to determine that yeah. they're fit. Okay, so how does one do that in prison where we know that there is this element, this force? Like, like why does it matter? Do you care? Would you do that in prison? Do you care? Sorry, yeah, I would, right? And I'm for a, like medically assisted suicide where like the element, right? The, the uh, course of element is their own body. Um, that's betraying them, uh, that's causing them immense amount of pain. I, even within that uh, situation, I think you can evaluate a person, right, and to see that if they are capable of making 
of this decision. We're not being pressured to do it for, you know, inheritance money or whatever the fuck. I, so, Prime, I, I want to hone in on the, the idea that, like, if someone was innocent and they had that element of hope, that this would not be something that would be, like, uh, an appealing option to them. I just don't think that really holds up. So going back to something like Destiny's opening, right, where he was basically saying, like, this it, this creates a framework, an institution where certain choices and incentives are, are just super skewed. We already know that people faced with the choice of a lengthy trial and maybe losing, even though they know they're innocent, will take a plea deal and plead guilty to something that they did do right so mm -hmm. in the same way i just don't see how that that would apply to this situation which exactly as scott is talking about you're what you're faced with is uh, a possible lifetime of just abject torture we've kind of all agreed that this is a kind of torture it's it's a it's supposed to be punishment whatever it is it's supposed to be punishment mm -hmm. so we've agreed that this is some kind of suffering some sort of immense pain that you're looking forward to it's that or it's i could just end it quickly uh what's my possibility of getting out not that great actually unless something crazy happens like if you happen to live in this transitional era where dna evidence starts being a real thing right but now like what what's the chances what are the odds i weigh my odds against like the the bliss of nothingness and i think the nothingness sounds really good yeah i, I see it happening just the same way that people get pressured into pleading guilty for things that they didn't do all the time. So, but people uh, do this. I, uh, even with that, sorry. You, you, no, start us, you go first. Okay, even even with that, like, let's say that, yeah, this is like uh, this torturous environment and and um and and they're forced to they, you know they're forced to be in this torturous environment and they're making this decision out of duress. I still don't feel like I can like tell somebody no too bad you have to live through this through this torture for the rest of your life because we don't have a better system for you. But you've already told I, then, them. Then that. leave them. Then leave them the sheets mm -hmm. in their cell. I don't know. Like I, I, right, I just, you've I already know, told like, them what, that. Why you have to incentivize this through an opt-in program? <laughs> like, right. I mean, like the, the 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 choice that we're making here, right, is between we have told you that we are going to torture you for the rest of your life, and then we're now presenting with a new policy idea which is that you can opt out of that torture for the rest of your life by killing yourself. These are your two choices, right? Maybe. If you want to rem remove like the, the possibility of, of somebody re-entering society, it, it's, it, it's the same thing. It, like both of these things are the same thing. If you, if this person is so bad, you don't want them to re-enter society. It's, it's essentially either you're removing them from society by imprisoning them forever or you're removing them from society by allowing themselves, allowing that person to end their life. Go ahead, Doobie. Yeah, so I'm wondering like um, what the extent of this is. So some of these guys, like uh, Charles Ng, for example, um, who you can go on, on YouTube right now and find videos of this guy and Leonard Lake uh, taunting a woman they're about to rape and, and murder, rape and torture, right? Um, so there's, there's no question this guy fucking did it, right? Um, he had like multiple heart surgeries. The son of Sam Killer has had multiple heart surgeries. Right. Um, so if they're in prison, um, for, I think some of the same is like six life sentences. Right. So mm -hmm. if he's in, if they're in prison for life, like, should we then pay to keep them alive to, to deal with any like health issues they have? Because that if if we're going to keep them there forever until they die, like, why would we extend their life? It, it just seems like. I, I mean, would you support that, Scott, like paying for all their, their surgeries and medical issues? I mean, I think I think. If we're going to have state run prison system, then we have to determine what is and isn't reasonable in that regard. Right. Because like I mentioned before, if you can get into the realm of like absurdity, right. If, if, if there's some weird experimental procedure that costs an inordinate amount of money and has a very low likelihood of, of doing something. So we do, we do have to determine what is reasonable, but the fact of the matter is, is that by, taking away someone's freedom of movement and by locking them in a cage, the state has taken guardianship of that person. They are responsible for that person's will. They are responsible for that person's safety. They are responsible for that person's health and well-being. If you disagree with that, because you have a more, you have a moral system that is so much more slated towards, you know, I don't know, some form of, judgment and punishment based thing right I, I can understand that but my position is is what i just laid out the state is responsible for their health well-being and safety when they take over ownership of this person and responsibility for this person 
you've acknowledged that it's torture. I have. It seems like not only not only are we torturing them, but we're like going out of our way through like uh, like uh, heart surgeries and shit that cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars to extend the torture. Right, but yeah, it, but again, I'm against good. the current system, right? Like, so, I, I feel like Scott is was right in the sense that like what this really comes down to is it, it possibly some sort of ethical, broader ethical system that you uh, may have a pre adherence to, or at least like some sort of theory about what criminal justice exists for. And at least in the United States, I like I know there's disagreements about why we should punish people, but the prison system as it originally developed in the United States, like sort of mid 1800s, was designed to be rehabilitative and punitive. Right. It was supposed to be suffering, but the suffering was supposed to cause a kind of internal reflection. Like, what did I do to bring this on myself? Like, why? Why have I done this? Would I ever do this again? And supposed to kind of scare them out of this. So so in like the um, like the early prisons, like in uh, Sing Sing and, and, and others like that, like they had, had enforced codes of silence, like extreme isolation. The idea was to inspire as much like self-reflection as possible. So when you reach the end of your term, you could you know, be a be a reformed person. And the data has always been against the idea that it actually worked. But like that was part of the idea. So what we are doing when we have a life sentence without the possibility of parole is monkeying with that system in some way that it, I think is we're struggling with. Like, what what's the point? What's the goal? What's the end here? I think we're all like kind of dancing around. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, um, I still feel like I still feel like we haven't determined what is the difference and when we're removing somebody from a society because we've determined that they're too dangerous to be in society. What's the difference between putting them in prison for life and letting them end their own life? I mean, I think the difference that's there why... is that they're they're alive, that they're like, that's a, I mean, if I was on their side and I'm not, um, I would just say that. They're well, alive, then let us they're... answer. <laughs> well, but you haven't, said, your you haven't actually bad. said it. Um, but like one one of the, one of the reasons is that they are alive, um, and that uh, uh, they are a valuable individual, right, on their own as a human being. Um, How are and, they contributing? Well, oh, you don't have to. Okay, so then if that's the answer that you're going them, right? with, then that's a dangerous yes, that's a dangerous can... right there because you could have a person who is like uh, fucking paraplegic or some shit, right? Um, who is not contributing to society, and then you we're can talking go down... about it's specifically life in prison. Though we're talking about we have decided to remove this person from society because they are too dangerous to be part of it. It's a so if you're in, in life in prison, what's the difference between keeping them in life in prison and allowing them to elect for for uh, for is, execution? This is why I brought up the ethics right because it is the difference is what do you believe is right and wrong and we believe well, I think, and i believe at least that it is wrong i, th I think you guys are like afraid Why? of the you know purging the undesirable Why is it wrong thing. but there, there are some people who are undesirable i.e rapists murderers serial killers shit like this right why and we decided that they're undesirable and under undesirable to the point where we stick them in a cage right away from everybody Right, so like I don't. Okay, okay, Doobie. So if why if, is it if wrong? The matter of purging the undesirables, the only, you'd be in a cage, Doobie. Doobie, if, about, if the like, only about... if the only moral equation you're going to do is what is the most successful thing to the rest of society, right? Then we can look at um, we can look at research that shows that the death penalty itself doesn't act as a deterrent against crime. And what we can do is we can go, well, you know what? Why does the death penalty not act as a deterrent? Well, that's because people sit in death row forever. It's essentially a long prison sentence. And really, people are just as scared of being caught so long as they're going to spend some time in prison. Wrong? So, so if we want to use it as a deterrent, since we have these serial killers, why don't we just take them out to a public stage and then flay them alive? And, and, well, and have it nationally idea. televised, right? And then we can get some utility out of them, right? Because the next time somebody is thinking about like, you know, you know, the next time a priest is thinking about molesting his little altar boy, he remembers vividly that that guy that was flayed alive on national television. And maybe that will act as a slightly stronger deterrent. Well, you'd have but to like problem is, the societal is that, trauma of like, you know, millions of people seeing somebody flee yeah, alive yeah, by the government fucking, on TV. I mean, right, so but you don't like know. So let's but but I would support, I would support making it much though? easier to, to execute people, of course. Is that even is that even the the reason though? Like, is is that your reason for why we put people away like this? Like, the, to me, I always thought the reason was we're removing this person. Um, it, the most important part for me was that. No, Scott, it's it your reason. <laughs> okay, okay, right, Scott. Explain to me. Explain to me why it's wrong. Explain to me exactly why it's wrong. 
because it's wrong to murder people and it's wrong for the state but to imprison people, people for it's life without who parole. Wants to murder themselves while it's you're torturing who wants them in their own life. And all, while well, you're that's, torturing but them. no, in assisted suicide, you are bringing someone else into this equation. You have to, you have to, like, yes, we're talking about somebody opting themselves. into a death penalty, right? Right. So, so, so yeah, somebody. I, I mean, if y'all are cool with the guy who, like, consented to, to being cannibalized, I guess that's fine. But, like, you're bringing somebody else into the equation who's going to be doing the killing of you, right? Yeah. You're and asking for help. <laughs> so it's not just you. I mean, yeah, sure. But, but again, that's the pr it's their body, right? If they want to end their life, that should be their choice to do. I don't understand. You still haven't explained to me, like, what's wrong about it. What's, go, why is it wrong? Go ahead. Um, go ahead, Tubi. Yeah, so, um, well, I want to give Scott a chance to answer that, actually, but if uh, you need some time. I, think I mean, I mean, like, I'm I'm like, I'm just not going to devolve this discussion into, like, going deep into, like, why I believe in a natural law philosophy and, like, why I'm against oh, natural certain that, like, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to go that deep oh, down. So, so, okay, I'm it was already, it was already too much for you, Stardust. Okay, all right. Um, I mean, if you so want to, you can't us, engage with the question without, without, without just, just answering, just answer it like a normal person. I have answered it like a normal person, and it was already too complicated for you. So me getting more complicated isn't going to help you. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, I see. Okay. So I actually had a so Destiny like earlier you said that uh you know well that's what the that's what the punishment is right we've decided they're gonna they're gonna be in prison forever so that's what the punishment is and you know uh, they don't get to opt out. Um, but what would you say to the, the question that I asked earlier, the, you know, should we, if we decided that's what the punishment is, right, they're there forever, would mm -hmm. you then, like, support extending their life through, like, uh, you know, medical intervention, when, intervention when they have issues and shit? Um, like, like, how far would you take that? Pro probably to whatever, I, I mean, I don't think we've decided that the punishment needs to be, like, an immortality of suffering or something, right? So, I mean, if somebody right. is in prison and they want to sign, like, a DNR, I don't think anybody would be opposed to that. Oh, that's I didn't thought of that. Scott, what do you think about that? So somebody's being tortured in prison and mm -hmm. they have a health issue. And mm -hmm. would you say that it's okay for them to sign a DNR, right? Uh, so that if they were to die from this health issue, no, don't don't resuscitate them. Because yeah, they're doing this under duress, you uh, remember. No. So I don't you, think they have, I don't think they have the will to be able to sign a DNR while under duress. No. Nice. So, so you would in favor of them being infinitely tortured. <laughs> yeah, that's like so, so you would be like, I mean, I'm like, against the system, but like engaging they're like the... 200 years old to like keep their so heart. Some pumping. dude is like fucking dying in bed and fucking Scott's like, no, dude, like you're going to be here forever. Like, you, sorry, <laughs> you can't. You don't have the opportunity to die. Like, we're just going to keep resuscitating. You're going to keep CPRing you over and 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 over. I'll give them morphine. Put, you know what I mean? Like monkey hearts, right? I'll give them I'll give them morphine. You know what I mean? Like, I'll let him die in peace, like without pain. But like, he doesn't he or she. Right. Because there are some females, believe it or not, rare as it is on uh, death row. Soon enough, um, but started. um, yeah, right. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, no, that uh, it's the same argument, right? I don't think they have the will under duress to be able to say that they want to kill themselves. So why would they magically have that same will when you just add like a little bit more of health issues? Like, no, they don't add have the, the capacity. paperwork to it, yeah. Right, like I just, I it, the 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 argument stands the same. You have to be consistent here. I mean, it sucks for that person that like they have cancer and they're in like death row, and we're like, have some chemo, buddy, but like. Do you have to be yeah. consistent? We have a fucked up system. Vomiting for, you know, however long you're do, in Do you have therapy. to be consistent or do you have to be empathetic? Right? Like, so if a person, <laughs> I feel like being consistent, bar, uh, being I, consistent I, is being empathetic. Mm -hmm. Being, I, I, I disagree. When you're saying that I'm going to extend this torture uh, for as long as humanly possible, right? So maybe not with the, you know, uh, forever replacing their hearts with monkey hearts, right? Maybe, maybe not that, but um, just below that, right? We're going to keep them alive for as long as possible, even if they say they don't want to, right? So they could be going uh, through like chemo or something, right? Which is, as I understand it, absolutely fucking terrible um, uh, while imprisoned. And then they're saying, well, okay, if, if my, my body starts to give out, let me go. They're saying, no, they, you, uh, while you're in prison, you don't have the right to consent there. And so, yeah, you're going to go through uh, a prison and then the extra torture of chemo. 
Yeah, I, I don't understand how, like, because you're saying that the state doesn't have the, shouldn't have the ability to, like, or the right to kill somebody, right? But you'd give them the right to keep somebody alive in torturous conditions for as long as, as possible? Who, I mean, someone who can, doesn't want to be in those conditions? You, I mean, I've already made the argument. You can try and say it in the most uncharitable way ever, but here's the argument. I don't think the argument. Uncharitable. It's not uncharitable. The argument, the, argument, exactly... the, argument is, the argument is this, is that you are torturing people. They do not have the ability to consent to kill themselves because they are being tortured. The state is the guardian of that person. They are responsible for the health and safety of that person. Do you think normal right? people the have the right to, su to sign a DNR since their ability to consent is compromised since they're suffering from a disease? Uh, again, you bring up, you, you, you finally come back into the discussion to bring up your already defeated point that it's wait, not so the what same do you, thing. Wait, what do you think, wait, what do you think a point? DNR is? Do not resuscitate. It means if you're dying. Yeah, so we, we were just talking about. Blood. Yeah, so we were just talking about a DNR for a prisoner. So mm -hmm. do you think normal people should be allowed to have DNRs? Yes. Yeah, but prisoners aren't. So aren't you technically like revoking rights from them for your moral answer here? Like you're taking something. I'm not right revoking from... rights. The state doesn't guarantee rights. The state has taken okay, guardianship okay, of right. someone because they've taken away their rights. So in in that case, though, the prisoner basically has less rights afforded to them than like a person in a hospital would. No. Because now if they if they yes because the state took them, okay, it doesn't then get to torture them with the idea of getting them back so that they can kill themselves, especially when we know that the system isn't perfect and that some people are going. I don't know what the number is, but some people are going to choose to kill themselves and later be found innocent. That is going to happen. Wait, why would you be in favor of I don't of, want to uh, live in Scott's state. Can I just say that? I don't want to live in his state. Oh, he doesn't his want the state. He doesn't very... want the state. But like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know he doesn't want one, but if he, if he had one, man. Is it a stateless, man, classless society? Well, Wait, so, so what? I don't understand, like, no, maybe maybe, like the, maybe this there's an explanation to this. I'm, I'm not a... Uh, maybe there's an explanation to this. I'm not thinking of Scott, but um, this seems to feel like a contradiction. So you're you're opposed to assisted suicide. I, I think I think that was your position. Um, but you're in favor of people being able to no, sign that's DNRs. That's you. Okay, so you're for assisted suicide. Yeah, I'm all for assisted suicide. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, then I missed that. So, okay, I want to... Uh, Scott has a magnetism about him. Um, able to make every topic about him. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm not trying to. No, I, I know, I know, I know you're not. I know, <laughs> I know you're actually not trying to do that. Um, but uh, still, um, we've fallen under his spell. Eucharist <laughs> has an opinion from a different angle, and I actually want to examine that too for our remaining time on this topic. Um, you know, so Eucharist, right? Like um, you're the understudy, right? But now you'll be the star of the show. Um, Chris, tell me more about your your uh, reasons for being wrong. Go ahead. I don't really know what else to say. I don't want to make this just an assisted suicide conversation again, but to like what Doobie just said, like no, I don't. I don't think there is an inherent contradiction between uh, uh, opposing assisted suicide and being okay with DNRs because withdrawal of care is ethically different than active intervention to to hasten death, and that's an ethical distinction that already exists in medical care and in hospitals. So, I like I, it's. Uh, the work has been done to defend it and we can use some fancy terms like doctrine of double effect to to hash it out but i like yeah I, i'm just i don't think there's a contradiction between those things i'm yeah I'm, I'm openly opposed to assisted suicide so the reason i come into this conversation saying no we should not give the prisoner an opportunity to kill themselves is just because up front i'm already opposed to that class of things which i would consider assisted suicide so all these considerations about like well this is torture etc i i just i you know i it doesn't it's not super persuasive to me i i think in both cases i actually do think the case of the prisoner and the case of the cancer patient are, are analogous in some way in the sense that i just think y'all are silly to think of suicide as this like one glorious liberty option in this scenario it, it, it's it's a it's a horrific uh choice in the face of horrific options yeah so like i mean maybe it's a lesser of two evils kind of thing but um yeah i just don't i don't view it as the, like giving yeah, somebody scott. some sort of like essential freedom that that improves their situation in any way necessarily uh, well, but, but scott if someone has like, like uh, oh i'm sorry eucharist no, i'm just no, used to yelling I at, i'm used to yelling I'm at scott you know, no. I, I just can't help <laughs> the eucharist um <laughs> So, but if someone has like a very serious condition, right? They're, they're like a terminal illness. There's no hope that they're going to recover from this thing. And, they, and they'd rather, you know, check out early than go through the pain that's going to get them to the point where they where they can use a DNR. You'd say that they should go through that pain, that they should wait for their body to, 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 to decay while they're alive and, you know, 
and and then you're gonna not not resuscitate them like why would you i don't understand yeah. like i mean why? I, I, like, when, I think it's what, a separate conversation like unless we want to turn this purely into an assisted suicide suffering panel we can i mean that, it's kind of connected right to, so like uh these yeah, people these people in prison point, are suffering and i would want to know why yeah but yeah, because weird. I don't, I, I, it's a conversation Prime and I had at length one on one after the last time we argued about this, which is I don't think that an individual suffering justifies doing something that I already think is a bad thing to do Why that you ought not to like kill yourself. It, it's more, it's evil. It's wrong. Why do you, do you believe in like mercy evil? killing? Like if somebody's like, like, fucking agony and there's no, they, they're like no. split open. Yeah. So you, no. you would just Why let them it? suffer Why until they die. No, I think you would. I think you would try to do what I, do whatever you could to comfort them until they died. Yeah, like so. So we have we have palliative care. We have uh, we have ethics surrounding these issues of of how we bring people comfort in as they are dying and as they are suffering. Uh, but that's different than intervening to kill them. Those are two different things. Yeah, I think I, I think yes. I, I think we should be eth able to ethically distinguish between choosing to kill somebody and choosing to comfort someone as they are already dying from a natural process. Yeah. Why is it evil? I I, I mean. Uh, we can bring Scott's terms back into this. I, I buy into a, a natural law theory, some things about the intrinsic value of human life, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it, it, what human life is a good that, that, uh, unless there's some greater good well, that mean, outweighs it. Human life can be good. Um, yeah. Human life can be good, but you can still it's acknowledge a good, that like yeah. when it's time, when it's time for somebody to choose to go, then. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we get choice. to. I don't. I don't think in most uh, non-exigent circumstances we get to choose to go. <laughs> There, are, I think there are circumstances where choosing to go could be legitimate. We could hash that out. It's a whole, it's a whole complex ethics conversation. But I, yeah. I genuinely don't understand this this line of thinking. Um, okay. It, it actually, it actually seems like way more like I, I don't want to say hardcore. It sounds way more cruel than, than even like my yeah. position, right? In terms of like like. Because you're saying that if somebody is like like they're going to suffer, there's no way to stop the suffering. Maybe you can give some some pain meds, but they're they're mm -hmm. gonna decay. They're gonna die. There's no way to cure this disease. You would say, yeah, you yeah, I, you need to go through that pain, right? Uh, rather than like I checking don't out think comfortably. Stopping suffering in, is an end ethical goal that we should pursue at any expense, right? It's not it's not like there are things that like yes, alleviation of suffering is in general a great thing and good thing, and we should do it and we should pursue it. So far as we aren't doing other bad and illegitimate things to to pursue that end, yeah. So so yes, I I think there are circumstances where suffering is preferable to doing something wrong, yeah. I'm just, yeah, you know, I just don't get how it's yeah. wrong. I just don't get how it's wrong to, to give somebody that choice when you know that they're, that like they have because it's the not only a choice. choice. The well, no, they, it is a choice. The, only, the the other choice that they have is is suffering, is being tortured. I don't understand how it's wrong to give them an alternative to that because killing them is wrong. Okay, I but see, I, but. Uh, but okay, but we we're not gonna okay. So in the, in the case of the prisoners, we're not gonna let them out, right? Because we've de decided they're they're danger to everybody. In the case of the 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 person with the terminal illness, there's no way to, there's no way for us to get rid of that illness. We can't just magic it away, right? So like, it, it just seems like we're you guys are in favor of causing people these people suffering for like no good reason. Uh, no, I, 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 I'm not in favor of causing them suffering. They're experiencing suffering, and I'm not in favor of all available options of alleviating allowing that suffering. them to die. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not allowing them to die is is uh, like literally causing them suffering. No, right? they're they're in a circumstance. They're they have an illness or something that is causing them suffering, right? And then there are things that you could do to alleviate that suffering potentially. Uh, and I don't think all things that alleviate suffering are necessarily good, legitimate fine whatever i don't right? think it's so, good to prolong somebody in suffering though i think so that's wrong I, too i, I think don't, that's I, evil yeah. too i don't i don't i wouldn't say it is a good thing to prolong someone's suffering i would say there are things that you ought not do to shorten suffering Like, like, can you not think of anything that you would collapse? Like, if I could come up with a crazy moral dilemma that would say, if you do this horrific thing, it would alleviate someone's suffering. I think we could think of examples where you'd say, no, okay, that's not okay. Right? So I'm saying there are things that are out of bounds that we should not, like, like if we, uh, it, I'm not even going to get into this. It's, it's just I mean, ridiculous like the very, philosophy the very class I, stuff, like, The very idea of suicide for most people is that they feel that they are suffering so much that they would rather not suffer any longer. Right. So you guys, some of you guys have taken this position from prison, right? That, that prison is, 
I guess in your approximation, the idea of prison is just to keep society safe. You don't believe in um, rehabilitation for these people um, because they're on death row. And you also don't believe in there needing to be a sense of justice for these people. No, no. Right? It's, it's so if, the state says that. Nothing the will state be has already The state has already done that. The state has said that crime that, that they're not going to be uh, real okay like the state has put this in place and then has sentenced them to a sense that says that uh they can't escape um that no matter what change they make within prison they're still going to be in prison where they become that paragon you're talking about right since that's already established then um and you already established that it's torture right uh, some uh, some great torture then let's give them another option right okay okay Roger, thank you for reframing everything that I was saying. Um, so anyways, um, the problem is, is do you trust? I, I guess I guess there's something to add into this. Do you trust in any way, shape or form the capacity of the state to actually not just murder people? Yeah. Like, do you, do you think that the systems will be set up ethically and right while they're in prison, while they're obviously under duress, while they're could be, like like. Uh, you like what happens when people are in solitary confinement, right? What happens when the real problem is that, you know, um, my uncle, for example, right? My uncle um, was in a relationship and murdered someone um, um, who was black and he was white in Memphis, right? And so he's in a position where he's in constant threat of danger in prison because he's a white man that murdered a black woman, right? And he argued it was in self-defense, I don't think so. Um, but at the same time, um, it may have been a passion killing or something. They're both high on crack. But the fact of the matter is, is that he didn't really murder her because she was black. They were dating, but he murdered a black woman. And he's in constant threat of being murdered by other people. Like there are so many fucking factors here and so many errors of corruption. Do you honestly believe that the prison system that I think almost all of us maybe one or two in the chat doesn't agree is a fucked up and corrupted system in America is going to actually use its power responsibly to allow in suicide for people that are only very properly vetted in, in their desire to go out simply because that's the choice they're making. And how do you separate that from the torture that they're going under? So before you, before uh, either you respond to that, I think that kind of uh, goes along with what destiny was saying at the very start. Um, like as to why you were against it because there's like conflicts of interest. Um, could you expand on that? You're talking to Destiny. Yeah, right? Steven. Steven. Oh, for me, for the conflict of interest? Yeah. I wasn't saying there was conflict of interest. I was saying that they, they're like weird perverse incentives. Yeah. That so like, um, and I think we've already kind of gone over these, but like basically the idea that like, there's probably going to be a disproportionate number of like ethnic groups that, or ethnic groups will disproportionately uh, get into like the uh, choosing to, you know, um, take the death penalty. Um, certain prison systems are probably going to let, like some prisons might just be really bad. And so people are going to, you know, elect to pick the death penalty here. And uh, when people do these in certain areas, I think people are going to be very unsatisfied rightfully so with like those types of quote unquote choices because it'll feel like oh well you know and, and then we also it, it'll feel like okay well some people are choosing this because the prison system is so fucked here this isn't right like something should change here you know yeah uh, i would agree um i i mean i i, I can't uh i um, disagree there but um i so like the response there though uh should be that along with this we should make further changes um uh like hold on prime case we're not allowed to do that we have to stick within the bounds of the question itself prime case no i yeah sure okay fine um but um i feel that um that when if we if we acknowledge right that these systems are so bad right then um, and they, they are being tortured. That, well, that exists, right? Whether us as a society are paying attention to this problem or not, right? And some of those places are really bad or terrible, right? So uh, I think the the greatest problem with my argument is that, well, it... <laughs> Stop it, Doobie. <laughs> the greatest problem with my argument <laughs> is that um, it, it gives those places that have the least empathy, right? Who... Um, 
are the most vicious to, uh, to the prisoners, reasons to be more vicious to a certain segment of their population, right? Because there's a, a possibility that they would do this. So I think that's fair uh, criticism. Um, but uh, still, I wouldn't want to take this uh, away, this possibility away from uh, the uh, the prison system as a whole, right? The prison, um, the, the lifers as a whole. Um, and I would rather look for other solutions, and there are other solutions, um, than saying that you simply don't get this option. Steven. Well, are you asking me if, like, we can, can we do it under our today system, or should it be, do we wait until we have, like, a more perfect system, or what do you mean? Uh, you, well, do what under the system? You mean, like, put this under, put, what exactly, expand on that, I'm sorry. Wait, you, wait, you expect, you're asking me the question. I thought you were asking Scott a question. Sorry, I repeat oh, no. that. <laughs> no, Scott just interjected. <laughs> I was just fucking with you because every time I go out of bounds even a little bit on this and say the whole system is fucked, you're like, no, 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 but you have wait, to engage so, with this. Can I, so, is it, so what I'm wondering is if it's like actually the system, right? So if we had a perfect system where we knew people um, who, who uh, were, were found guilty were actually guilty, Right. Um, and, you know, the, the prison system wasn't like uh, shit and people weren't getting raped and beaten up in prison and the guards weren't shit and everybody was nice and yada, yada, yada. If we had a good system, but we still had people who were serial killers, serial rapists, right, who was too dangerous to have in society. So we decided to stick them in prison uh, with with the possibility of parole, Scott, um, for, for life. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and but these were people that are so fucking dangerous right, that that uh, the, the chances of them actually attaining parole are pretty low, right? So if we had that system, would you then be for um, for uh, allowing people to to you know to go with assisted suicide? Well, some segment of our population would have to be godlike figures of omnipotence. Yeah, sure, I, I understand. Um, so I I couldn't I couldn't imagine what that fantasy world looks like. We don't have well, a perfect I, I system. Before, yeah. We don't. We don't have an. We don't have any understanding of the human brain that would evolve us into such a creature, or understanding of a technology and, and what its impacts on the world would right. be. You're you're talking about science fiction beyond. I feel, I feel, I feel like you're not engaging. I feel like there's yeah, no yeah, reason. Yeah, I'm not engaging. It's hypothetical. We, we, I think when it comes like, to this because type of perfection, I think it becomes really hard to like because so many things are changing at this point that like the the structures that we're even analyzing are just like incomprehensible to what we have now. It's kind of like saying imagine if you could like rape people who could like delete their minds and have no problems but then also turn back time. Does that make it okay? Like it's it becomes incomprehensible at that point I think. Yeah, it's, everything it's, it's surrounding just, these systems would change. Yeah. Who goes to jail? Why they go to jail? Can they be rehabilitated? What kind of rehabilitation do we have? How do we sentence people? Like everything would change so much that the answer becomes meaningless I think. I think But does crime even exist in that society? Like Yeah. Like we so don't, I don't So know. there's not like a, con a conceivable system right uh that you guys can can imagine right where where it would be okay to to have assisted suicide as an option in prison under what okay, so there, i'm telling i'm asking if there's a, a conceivable prison right in in the future at some at any point oh right? and, and you're in cap society uh maybe right where we're having the option of opting assisted suicide would be like like uh, reasonable because because we're not dealing with, you know, uh, the racism or whatever the fuck that might lead people to pushing people to, to that option. Yeah, I mean, like, in, if I if I was envisioning my perfect society, like, I don't even believe in involuntary prisons, dude. OK, like, so so it seems like so it seems like the issue isn't so much the, the, the system itself, because we can't even imagine the system uh, where where. No, the issue so, is so it, the system itself. Okay, but. Uh, I, okay, but is it like just that they're like humans involved and humans can make mistakes? So at some point, set, there might like be, be like a, a zero point one percent chance that uh, that uh, at some point someone who's innocent would go for assisted suicide because they're being tortured by guards or whatever. Like I don't like know if, why if, you're if, saying, if, if we're at that level, like why why number. support why support like putting people in jail? I already at all? gave you a case of people that got out of prison and committed suicide because of the tortures that they experienced in prison. Sure. Much less people that are in prison. In yeah, there, there are people who've spent 20, 30 tortured. years in prison who who were not guilty, right? So so exactly. should we just not? So because that possibility exists, should we not have prison on the table? It's you're saying because that possibility exists, and what I'm saying is the action itself is wrong. Wait, you just well, you, you don't you don't I'm think, not doing you don't I'm not the doing action. the right. 
I'm not doing the right and wrong calculus based off of its consequences. I'm doing the right and wrong calculus based off of saying that the state who has people in its custody and in its charge do not have the right to assist in killing them. Okay. Like, like ever in, in any, ever. any situation. Okay. So this is some like, uh, like some deep seated moral, uh, position that probably doesn't make any sense. Sure. It doesn't make okay. any sense. It's such a crazy idea that people believe the state killing its citizens is wrong. It's, it, it's such a fringe minority I mean, it is, of people, actually. Yeah, I think I think plenty of but people out there think this. of situations where it might be okay for the state to kill somebody. It's not even the state killing. If it's the person who wants to die, right? The state is just assisting them. It's not uh, like. Would it? Make I mean, a I feel like that's a that, distinction without a difference. Would it make a difference? I mean, how could how could you even be for assisted suicide then? If if we're dealing, if you're, we could talk about the the society society as it is, right? And oh God, we're, you know uh, this terrible, corrupt capitalist system, right? Where people are, are forced to to grind their nose against uh, a stone to to get food for on their table and to, to to drink water and to have clothing and shit like that. This system uh, drives people into, into depression, into despair. So how could we possibly allow people to kill themselves if the system itself is what's making them depressed? Like now the, the you're system. talking, Doobie. You're tracking no, with me. All right. Yeah. It's, but, okay. I, I said the thing, but I think it's a dumb thing. Right? I'm asking Scott, like, how could you? <laughs> I know, but you're making good points. Like, keep no, it up. The servile state is a thing. No, Let's it's talk not. About this is it. this like, is like uh, this is like saying that um, no, no. So long as we have capitalism, all prostitution is rape because you know sexual sexual, sexual exploitation, right? Like that's it's silly, right? Um, so Scott, like, how do you square those two things? Is it conceivable that there are people in prison that are of sign, sound mind and body that want to kill themselves? Yes. The problem is, is that they are in custody. And the, and the ability for us to differentiate between those people that are of sound mind and body that want to kill themselves for whatever reason, and of those that are doing so because of the circumstances of the torture that they are in, is part of the problem and the other part of the problem is that the state has become custodians of these people by taking away their rights by taking away their right of movement by taking away their right okay. of liberty and the ability we already to agreed that things, we already agree that they have some kind of responsibility to, to like uh to fund these people's like health care and shit like that yeah right so, so if if one of the um requirements is that they go through like a lengthy examination with multiple like visits with a psychiatrist or a therapist or whatever the fuck Right. And, and maybe you can even give them like uh, medication to try to help their depression, try to convince them out of this mindset. And if none of that works. Right. And they still want to kill themselves. And the state has gone you know, above and beyond to try to make sure this person is of sound mind when they're making this, this decision. Would you still say that, that the state shouldn't do it? From a moral position at a certain point of um, of, you know, arbitrary like amounts of work put into it, I would I would. In order to be consistent, I would have to say yes. The problem is, is that I would never advocate for something like that because I think that you're talking about something that would never um, exist in actuality. Because I don't, I don't think I don't, the prison system is, would be able to come up with a program that is that effective and that and that meaningful and that um, well done. Instead, I think there would be instances of, of of prison guards murdering people, of people torturing people to do certain things, of people killing themselves, um, you know, because they're in danger in prison and they don't want to die violently. They want to die peacefully, et cetera, et cetera. There's way too many problems and issues with this. But the way yeah, that I, actually, I don't, I don't think it's conceivable. Works. The, that's not even how elective execution works. The people still have a waiting um, uh, time. People still have a waiting, like, uh, when they elect to be executed. It's not an, an immediate thing. Yeah, and I don't think it's inconceivable to think that the state would give these people, like, mental health care because the state already does that, right? But prisoners do have access to, to therapists and to psychiatrists and whatnot. Why would I... Who said who said that it's inconceivable that the state? You said it'd be inconceivable that the, that the state would do uh, the necessary. Like, how many? Tax, right? How I. many fucking having them see a therapist? Having them see. Dots you have to do to wait, make no, me say some shit that's I never what, that's, said. That's what you were. I I gave you the example, right? So if the state was ensuring uh, through having these people see therapists and psychiatrists and whatnot, ensuring that this is that they are of sound mind and this is what they wanted to do. Right. Uh, would you be OK with it? And you said you'd have to say yes, but you think that uh, that situation 
situation would be inconceivable. Right. So right, given I, that the state separate... already provides mental health services to prisoners, it doesn't seem that, inc that inconceivable. Unless if you're, you're equating the state providing a psychologist for the state being able to determine people that are in torturous conditions and isolated and being tortured and all of all of the variables that go into that, the state being able to adequately screen all of those people. It's an impossibility. I don't see how that's like that's even more um, complicated than somebody who has been like sexually assaulted multiple times and they're going to psychiatrists and saying, hey, I want to kill myself because there, there are tons of um, factors there, right? It, maybe maybe it's their home life. Maybe it's their job. Maybe they're not eating right. Maybe they need medication. Right there. So I don't think it's any less complicated right, than, than, that, than that equation. Right, so um, if you're for assisted suicide generally, right, and you think, and, and you think somebody those... has the ability to make that determination, why wouldn't you think that somebody would have the ability to make the determination in this case? <sighs> if if you go and talk to like, I mean, and I know that you probably have, but like, go go talk to them again, counselors or um, you know, um, masters in social work or psychologists, right, and and they'll admit if they've been doing it for quite a long time, right, that they make mistakes. That there's tons of things that they didn't catch that people just slip through the fucking cracks that they think they're getting some progress with somebody and then the next thing you know they end up committing suicide and they had no idea that that was going to happen right like it's a it's a thing that that counselors and and um mental health um professionals constantly yeah. have to engage in is is burnout from the the failures that they have Okay, but then why are you for assisted suicide if you're saying that uh, the people, because earlier you asked Prime, hey, are you for these people seeing therapists and whatnot prior? Prime said yes, and you're okay with that. But if you're saying now that those people can make mistakes, and I think we can all acknowledge that you know, people make mistakes sometimes, right? Why would you be in favor of allowing them to kill themselves if the people that they're going to for to make that determination? Again, again right, could I've be already made mistakes. this argument. And we're circling back, right? We're circling there's back a, because there's a there difference seems like between, you're contradicting yourself. I'm not contradicting myself. It's very simple. There's a massive difference between the state that has taken away people's civil liberties and put them in a torturous position and the difficulties and the conundrums with that and people that are presumably out and free and their liberty and their choices. Pardon me. Too much egg drop soup. Okay. So, so you are, you think somebody has the ability to make the determination with somebody who's like out in the wild feeling depressed and wanting to kill themselves. But if somebody who is like forcibly in, in a cage because they've killed people or whatever, you don't think, you think that's too far, right? That's a bridge too far. Yes. Uh, do, what They're do you, under... why do you think? What? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how many times we have to circle around this, man. I just like, I mean, like we're circling the drain. It's like, like you're pro, you're pro whatever the state like decides, as long as it's not killing the prisoner. So you're okay with the state? <laughs> what? Like, it's, it's kind of like what it's coming across at, as to me. No, like I said, like I'm staying within the bounds of the conversation and with what we can do currently and whether or not I would support this policy change. Right? We're not talking about what I support. Like I said, I don't support involuntary prisons. Okay, but that's maybe, a whole other fucking. Okay, piece. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for help. Okay, Destiny, you have like two IQ points more than I do, right? So like, is there something here that I'm missing? Uh, no. I mean, I think we have a just a fundamental divide that we can't bridge. You know. But would you agree that there's like a contradiction there, or, or am I like, am I like imagining that? Because I feel like. I don't know what the why there'd be like this, you know, as soon as this person is forcibly in a cage, right, suddenly we're too far for somebody to make a determination as to whether or not, you know, they're a sound mind. Like like should do prisoners just not have the ability to consent to anything because they're under duress? Well, is that the case, Scott? Can prisoners not consent to anything? What do you what do you mean by consent to anything? Can they not consent to a choice between fucking whether or not they want the cornbread or whether or not they want the brownie? Like, what are you talking about? Well, sometimes these people have like a conjugal visits, right? Where somebody will come and have sex with them. So given that this person is under duress, they're they're stuck in a situation where they have no access to the opposite sex and somebody pops up who wants to have sex with them. Right. They might not actually want to have sex with this person. Right. But they're forced to they're, because it's their only option. Right. So do they really have consent in that situation? I don't, they're under know, I don't even if they're, if, if they're if the option the other option is having like blue balls for the rest of your life or jerking off in your cellmate or whatever 
So you're saying people can't sexually consent in prison? I think they can. You're saying yeah, that they I can't consent to like end their life. So what what else can they consent to? Under duress. It's an interesting question psychologically that I think would actually require research to better understand. That's my okay. answer. And like I honestly think you might actually have to you might actually have to to research that. Like I think that's actually an interesting thing for sex researchers to look into is the ability of people to psychologically consent under the trauma of prison. I weirdly agree with with uh, Doobie's take here in the sense that I don't know that there is a meaningful difference in ability to consent under duress, regardless of where the duress is coming from, whether it is literally pathological, like your body is attacking you, whether it is the state uh, enforcing some sort of punishment against you. Uh, all of these situations of duress, I feel like are, are equivalent and monkey with our traditional conceptions of free and informed consent in some way. I think I think that's a fair intuition. Yeah, I think I think you know if it is like so, uh, they can't consent, it's like some form of rape. Like I might need to have different plans for this weekend because that that'd be kind of fucked. Like I don't, I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't like, want to rape anybody. Oh, yeah, Newbie wants I wanna... life in prison because he yeah, has I'm conjugal sorry. visit I mean, I'm, scheduled. I'm sorry. Uh... I'm, I'm sorry that you asked an interesting question and you demanded that I someone like plant their flag in the hill, but like that is an actually interesting question that I feel like would actually require research, better research to understand. I can't answer whether or not. Now, obviously, you know, can't, there are certain things you obviously can't consent to, right? You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, a female prisoner in a guard situation is a little different than like their husband. Um, you know what I mean? Like these are two different ends of the spectrum here, but I mean, it would be interesting to see.